What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike Devo and today we're going to be answering one of the most common questions in the Rhinos community. Which version of Rhinos is better? Teamer or four color? In order to answer that question, I'll be going over the pros and cons of each version, as well as which flex spots you can play. By the end of this video, you'll have a better insight on each version of Rhinos and hopefully know which version to play at your next event. If you're enjoying the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Now let's get into it. I really enjoy playing Rhinos as a competitive deck. It's consistent, and has a lot of interaction, and can occasionally pull off a Blood Moon Cheese. While the deck can be described as linear since your main goal is always to resolve with crashing footfalls, the way in which you get there can vary from game to game. Rhinos is a tempo deck that uses cheap spells to interact and disrupt our opponent's strategy in the early game. From turn 3 and on, we're hoping to cast a Cascade spell and resolve a Crashing Footfalls and continue the aggression from there. Outside of the Cascade plan, we're also able to play a fair magic game. As a result, we're able to build the deck so that we can exchange card advantage for tempo and pressure. Nearly every other card in our deck is a cheap or free spell that foregoes card advantage in order to temporarily stop our opponent's actions for one or more turns. The idea is to repeatedly do this while also attacking our opponents with Rhinos. In the grindier games are games where our opponents have hate cards for our cascade spells. Some of our cheap interaction that is used for tempo gain in the early turns can also double up as fair threats that can be played. Teamer is generally better for many reasons. Let's start with my favorite, Blood Moon. Teamer is a lot stronger when you have a meta that is vulnerable to Blood Moon such as greedy 4 color or 5 color mana bases, Tron, and Amulet. Since we have a consistent 3 color mana base, we're able to fetch and deploy a Blood Moon as early as turn 2 with Gemstone Caverns, which can potentially win the game on the spot. Even though our opponents are expecting this, it forces them to fetch basics conservatively or else be locked out of the game entirely. I've also found that I don't mind using it to bait a counterspell in order to resolve a true threat. There's been many times where my opponent is forced to counter Blood Moon or reluctantly choose it with Thoughtseize while leaving all my Cascade threats in hand. This can be advantageous if we're facing a lot of hate like Teferi Time Raveler, Chalice of the Void, or Flusterstorm. Having creatures that ignore any hate while letting us keep up the pressure can win games with a fair beatdown plan. By sticking with only 3 colors, we gain a few advantages. First, our mana is much more consistent. The first few turns of the game are generally always the same with how we set up our mana. In a perfect world, we fetch Ketria Trium, Island, and Forest to set up for Blood Moon. If we have Crashing Footfalls in hand, then we may fetch differently depending on what fetches or basics we have in order to suspend on turn 1. Regardless, we almost always have 3 colors by turn 3. In addition to easier color fixing, we take way less damage from fetching since we can fetch basics and get all the necessary colors. There will be times where you'll have to fetch shock a lot in a game, but if you're able to sequence what double color sources you need, then you can save yourself some life points. Team of Rhinos only has access to 8 Cascaders in the form of Shardless Agent and Violent Outburst. We have less cascade effects than 4 colors since we don't use white mana which would give us access to Ardent Play. This is a downside because it makes our top decks less explosive. How many times have you found yourself sitting there hoping to top deck any cascader to win the game? Ardent Play gives us those extra chances. If you're expecting a lot of black red scam or similar disruptive decks in your meta, Teamer has fewer explosive top decks in the form of cascaders. After you've been scammed or the match becomes an attrition war, having more ways to cascade in your deck becomes a real thing. So again, this goes back to having less Cascaders in the deck. So those were all my pros and cons of playing the Teamer version of Rhinos. Now let's get into why you may or may not want to play 4 color instead. So as we discussed, Teamer only has access to 8 Cascade spells in the form of Charlotte's Agent and Violent Outburst. Adding white allows us to cast Ardent Plea, which is just more Rhinos and potentially some Exalted triggers. When you're able to just slam Cascade after Cascade, you feel unstoppable. This concept goes into another benefit, which is more cascade effects means better top decks. Your opponent thought seizes or griefs away your cascader, your chances of drawing another one are increased. It's also great when your opponent sees a hand of redundant cascade effects, size, and picks whichever one because it doesn't really matter. The number one reason to be running 4 color is because of the most recent addition to the deck and one of the greatest removal spells ever printed. That would be Leyland Binding. This is the main reason we stretch our mana. Having one mana get rid of pretty much any permanent is beyond amazing. Leyline Binding takes care of any Rhino hate like Chalice of the Void and Teferi Time Raveler. It can force early popping of engineered explosives and even remove a giant Murktide or Archon of Cruelty. The release of Leyline Binding created 4 color Rhinos and is the backbone of this version. Choosing to be 4 color means we lose any cheesy Blood Moon tricks. There have been versions of this deck that try splashing Blood Moon in the sideboard, but it seems pretty greedy. 
We don't get to play it and we become very susceptible to an early blood moon, especially during our early setup turns where we want to get our triumphs in order to make Leyland Binding cost 1 mana. We are not running a plane, so unless we can float white and tap a lot of mana in response to a blood moon, there's no good way of getting it off the board. We usually don't have Brazen Borrower to bounce it and we're rarely if ever bringing in Force of Vigor for solely blood moon. It comes down to either half force negation or suck it up and play through it. It can be really daunting knowing your opponent plays Blood Moon, but you're not sure if you want to fetch basics, which mess up your Leyline Bindings and Arden Please, or just cross your fingers and hope to get pressure beforehand. If you're truly scared, you can forego white during the game until you really need it by fetching your Island and Forest in order to have a reasonable chance of fighting through it. This leads into my next con, which is 4 color has less consistent mana. While it's easy to get all 5 colors of mana by turn 2 if you get your Triumphs, there are a few downsides to this strategy. First of all, you're taking some vital turns off that could be used to disrupt your opponent with suspending a footfalls, icing a land, killing a creature, etc. Crafting your mana each game can also be tricky because sometimes you will be short on a certain color, usually white or blue depending on the land you drew. You have to think ahead knowing you want a double spell, but if you tap your white source then you might not have your other color. While it's true you can fetch and shock in order to avoid being color screwed, it can be risky taking so much damage. Although this can be a concern for any 4 or 5 color mana deck, I feel like we're punished slightly more because if we fail to quote, do the thing, we're at a lower life total with very little to show for it. The last con of playing for a color comes off as sort of a good problem. Since we have access to so many Cascaders, there will be times where we cast all of our Crashing Footfalls, and now Charlotte's Agent, Violent Outburst, and Arden Play are way worse. The only upside is that casting a Cascadeless Arden Play stacks Exalted Triggers for whichever creature you hopefully have on the battlefield. You can use Violent Outburst as a lackluster combat trick, and Charlotte's Agent just becomes a 2-2 body for 3 mana. This issue can be relieved by casting Endurance on yourself to shuffle in your graveyard and reset your deck. This is a real thing if the game goes long, and typically if you expect this to happen, like against control matchups or sometimes the mirror, you're probably boarding in Endurance anyway. While the core of Team of Rhinos is pretty much set in stone, there are about 4-5 to five flex spots that let you sculpt the rest of your deck to your liking. This can be adding your preferred ways to help win or adjust for a specific meta. Let's go over some more commonly played cards I think deserve a flex spot. Prismari Command is a very flexible card with its 3 modes. It can be a main deck answer to Chalice of the Void and also pretty effective if your meta has a lot of hammer or artifact decks. It also pitches to both Force of Navigation and Fury. I've often used it to make a treasure and loot at the end of my opponent's turn to set up a big play on my turn. Overall, it's okay. Season Pyromancer is a good choice in a more control or grindy meta where games go longer and you end up using all of your resources. It's the only card we have that draws us cards to help refill an empty hand. Its second ability can also help stall the game if necessary by providing chump blockers. The Evoke Elementals see some play in the main deck depending on how volatile the meta is to them. If Murktide or other graveyard decks are being heavily played, it could be fine to add some endurance to your main to hedge against them. The same could be said for subtlety if the meta is right. It shines the best against Heavy Control, Amulet, and Tron metas, but overall, it's sort of medium. There are some lists that play at least one Delve Threat, whether it's Become Immense or Murktide Region. I think it's fine to play one or the other depending on what your goal is. Your graveyard will eventually be filled enough to where casting one of these spells for its cheapest cost is a real thing. Murktide can be a solid late game beater, which isn't exactly the game plan we're going for, but it's another unexpected threat for our opponents to deal with. Become Immense is another Delve Threat that your opponent always has to contemplate when being attacked. It can be considered win more or awkward to use since it requires a threatened play, but a majority of the time you'll have one. When it works, it's glorious. It can create blowouts if they don't expect it and put the game heavily in your favor. It can also double up as a removal spell while trampling over with your 10-10 Rhino. Sign of Draco was played in the early stages of 4 color because of how well the domain mechanic complemented Leyline Binding. It's a solid beater for as cheap as 2 mana and it plays around typical Rhino hate like Spell Pierce and Fluster. It's a decent choice if you want to add a few to your deck, but Draco has been seeing less play than before. Teferi is an option if you want to maintain more of that control aspect when going for color. He is an inherently strong card and if you can play him in your deck, you almost certainly should. If your meta is a lot of Murktide, Rhinos, Creativity, aka a lot of blue decks, then Teferi is a great addition. A neat trick you can do with Teferi is down tick on either your Charlotte's Agent or Arden Plea in order to recast them for more Rhinos. In all, these flex spots can either complement our core game plan or be played as an alternative in the face of Cascade Hate. So which version of Rhinos is better, Teamer or Four Color? The real answer is, 
It depends. After going over all the pros and cons of each version, it really comes down to what your meta looks like. Are there more decks susceptible to that tempo Blood Moon plan? Or should you be playing 4 color with Leyline Binding for that necessary removal and control element? I also like to think of preference as well instead of pure objectivity. Do you enjoy cheesing your opponents and locking them out of the game? Or do you prefer a more pseudo control game plan by controlling the board with more removal while getting the beats in? If you're newer to playing Rhinos in Modern, I think Teamer is the version for you. You can focus more on the core game plan of casting Rhinos and less on mana sequencing. Generally, the early turns are relatively similar game to game, so there's less stress on how to sequence, and more on making your land drops, killing any early creatures, and cascading turns 3 and on. Overall, there are arguments for both sides, but I want to hear from you. Which version do you think is better? Do you think I left any cards out that deserve a spot? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Peace!